Hello, everyone. My apologies for the late start. We unfortunately had a massive distributed denial of service attack against uh, our servers. Saturated all of our all of our data lines, like basically hundreds of gigabits of, of data were saturated. We've we think we've overcome most of that, and so it, it's uh, not time to proceed. But as this this massive attack illustrates, there's a lot of opposition to people just hearing what President Trump has to say. And I'm honored to have this conversation. I want to emphasize it's a conversation and it's really intended to just get a feel for what Donald Trump is just like in a conversation. So it's hard to catch a vibe about someone if you just don't hear them talk in a normal way. And when, when there's an adversarial interview, like no one's themselves in an adversarial interview. So for, and, and this is really aimed at open minded, independent voters who just try to make up their mind. And so you can understand what is, what is it just like to have a conversation? Honored to, Donald, great, great to, to speak. We, we had a, a great conversation yesterday. As, as you mentioned yesterday, if, if we could just record that conversation and post it, it would have been excellent. I hope we can have something like that today. I think we will. I'm pretty sure we will. And congratulations, because I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people. And that's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that have something to say that are constructive, oftentimes constructive. And yeah. uh, so we have to consider it an honor. But congratulations on breaking every record in the book tonight. That's great. Thank you. Maybe start off with the assassination attempt, which was an incredible thing. And I have to say that your actions after that, ass that, that assassination attempt were inspiring. You, instead of shying away from things, instead of ducking down, you were pumping your fist in there and saying, fine. And I think that's the, the president of the United States represents America. And I think that is America. That is, that is strength under fire. And so that's a big a part of the reason why I was excited to endorse you as uh, the, the, the president of the United States for have, having enough term here is that was just incredibly inspiring. But, but what was it like for you? Not pleasant. I have not to be pleasant. Honest. I said it was blood. I had more blood. blood. I didn't know fun. I had. I didn't know I had that much blood. The doctors <laughs> later told me that the ear is a place that is uh, a very bloody place if you're going to get a hit. But uh, in this case, it was probably the best alternative you could even think about because it went at the right angle and it was a hard hit. It was very, I guess you would say surreal, but it wasn't surreal. I was telling somebody you have instances like this or a lot less than this, where you feel it's a surreal situation. And I never felt that way. I, I knew immediately that it was a bullet. I knew immediately that it was at the ear and because uh, it, it hit very hard, but hit the ear. And I also heard people shout bullets uh, get down because I, I moved down pretty nicely, pretty quickly. And we had bullets flying right over my head after I went down. So I'm glad I went down. The, the bigger miracle was that I was looking in the exact direction of the shooter. And so it hit me at an angle that was far less destructive than any other angle. So that was the miracle. That was yeah. for those people that don't believe in God. I think we got to all start thinking about that. You have to. I'm a believer. Now I'm more of a believer, I think. And a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of great people have said that to me, actually. But it was it was amazing that I happened to be turned just at that perfect yeah. angle. And all because I put down a, a chart on immigration that showed that the numbers were so great. I love that chart even I mean, more maybe now. Maybe it's a sign. Yeah. Maybe that's a it's sign. Yeah. Immigration sign. You, you highlighted a, a serious issue. Yeah. And at that moment, Mr. 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 Your head. The amazing thing, the sign, I said, bring down that sign on immigration. And it was literally about an eighth of a second where it would be good. And, and after that, it was going to yeah. be a disaster, no matter which way you were facing but it just had that that perfect angle, which was exactly yeah. at this shooter. Very sad situation. Such a sad situation. As we lost somebody that was great, Corey, yeah. who a firefighter, a, a, a great gentleman, a great a great trumper. He was a, a just a fantastic family and a fantastic man. And a friend of mine came up, Elon, and said, "I'd like to give uh, the family some kind of help." And I said, right, "That's great." He said, "Do you mind?" I said, "I don't mind at all." And he wrote out a check for a million dollars, gave it to the wife, and she said, "This is really nice, but I'd rather have my husband back," which is a nice thing sure. for somebody to say, to be honest. She's great. The family is great. And we raised a lot of yeah. money for them and for two other gentlemen were, are unbelievable also. They were hit really badly. They thought they were not going to make it, and they did. The doctors in the Butler area, I tell you, they were incredible. They saved the two, and they were really hit tough, both of them, equally. Yeah. And we thought, yeah. I, my first question was because I heard bullets flying over me. I said, how many people were killed? Because we had a massive crowd there. 
a tremendous yeah. thousands and thousands of people. And, and there was no land. It was just, it was all people. So I said, how many people have been killed? Because I knew there were other shots being fired. And, sure. and they said, we don't know yet, but some people have been badly hurt. And I have to give the uh, secret service a sniper, they call him, or sharpshooter, but sniper, yeah. because he didn't know there was a problem. He's been, he's an extraordinary shot obviously. And he didn't know there was a problem. And he yeah. was able to pick it all out within five seconds. And he used one bullet from very far away, probably 400 yards. The shooter was 130, but he was, on the, he was on the opposite side of the field and the podium. And he saw the smoke and the flame from the gun, immediately recognized it, and immediately took a shot. And it was one perfect shot from very far away. And if he didn't yeah. do that, Elon, he would have, if he would have, a lot of people, a lot more people have been, could have been sure badly hurt and killed. So yeah, I, I have to take my hat off to him because that's also a surreal. He's been with them for 23 years and there's, yeah. he's never had anything like this. And all of a sudden he has to act and it's a very tough thing to sure. act and to be shooting somebody. But he saw the he saw the gun, saw the smoke, saw the flame from the gun very far away. I obviously has very good eyes. He's got very good vision, which I assume you yeah. have to have in that particular work. But he, he took aim very quickly and it was, they say it was approximately five seconds from long range, yeah. one bullet. If that didn't happen, because yeah. the shooter had a lot of bullets, he had a lot of cartridges sure. up there with him. That's clearly, he was very competent in taking that shot to stop the assassin, the attempted assassination. But there does seem to be some pretty significant failings elsewhere in the system. There's just no way that, like how on earth does a shooter get on a roof 130 yards away? That seems crazy. I think most people like people are wondering how that on earth could such a thing happen. I view it as two ways. There should have been nobody on the roof. Uh, there were people yeah. because there were so many tens of thousands of people there. There were people that were seeing him. And there was one woman with a red shirt and uh, Trump all over it. And, she, and she's screaming, that guy's got a gun. You saw it probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I'm just, for my part, I think probably many members of the public are wondering how the heck are basically People wandering by, pointing out there's a guy on the roof with a gun, yeah. and they're seeing it, but uh, somehow it's not being addressed. That that does seem yeah, crazy. They're going to learn from this. The uh, communication between the local police, who had an idea, and then ultimately a man lifted himself up to the roof, could barely do it because he was pulling himself up. And yeah. he saw the man with the gun. The man with the gun pointed the gun at him. He thought he was probably going to get shot. He was like pulling himself up. And because of that, he couldn't get to his gun. And he fell down, actually very badly hurt his leg, his ankle uh, here very badly. But okay. he fell down. And he did, you know, from what I understand, he did say there's a guy up there with a gun. The shooting started very quickly after that. I think it forced the shooter to go maybe quicker. You're supposed to be a very good. My sons, Don and Eric, they came believe what happened. They said from 130 yards, a bad shot would hit that target almost every time. They said it's like in golf, yeah. sinking a two-foot putt. Yeah, it's, it's not a hard, it's not a no, tough shot. It's not a, it's um, not a long shot. The uh, Secret Service person had the long shot. He had a triple the yeah. distance, actually. It was a terrible thing. It, look, it, it's hard. I have to say this about the Secret Service. When I went down, and I went down based on, I think they're screaming, but other people also, because people saw this happen. You had so many People. One of the miracles was that nobody ran. If, if a gun goes off, the crowd yeah. control people showed us this. When guns go off, and it does happen in stadiums at a soccer match or some kind of a match, everybody flees. They call it a stampede like cattle. But everybody and a lot yeah. of people get killed with those stampedes. We had sure. more people than you'd have at some of these matches or, or these games. And nobody left. We had a small group behind us in the grandstand. And that was full. And you look at it as it was taking place. And Normally, they'd be running. They didn't leave. They saw that I was hurt. They saw a lot of blood. And they saw that I went down. And it's almost like they wanted to be with me. Out front, you had thousands, tens of thousands of people. You, as far as the eye could see, you had people in Butler. As far as the eye could see. And and a lot of press, too. There were many cameras on watching this. It's what made, makes it so different, because normally things happen that aren't good, but you never have a picture. Here we have these cameras shooting it. Amazing. But one of the interesting things was that you didn't have anybody flee. You didn't have anybody stampede. Sure. Nobody. And there were some people behind me. They stood up and they're looking like I tell you, you want to have yeah, you yeah. want to have them in a foxhole with you. I want to meet some of those people sure, because sure. it's so different from what you heard. But so I was down. But the Secret Service guys, yeah. there were bullets flying right over my head. You could hear them go whizzing. And yeah. uh, these guys came jumping on top of me. You know, and a young lady, Kate, were jump. They moved so fast. And let me tell you, that took tremendous courage. Now there was a lack of coordination. 
And there was obviously everybody understands that, that somebody that building should have been covered. Looking at the, the aerial views, I, that building would be like the number one spot for a sniper. It's like the, if you were to pick, what is the favorite? Place? What, if you so if the goal is to assassinate, what's your favorite spot? That building, uh, the building would be number one. That would have been the spot. Um, it's like you can you can ask for a better no, location. It's no, that would have been the spot. Um, so what people think yeah. is when the local policeman, who by the way uh, he really. He did what he was supposed to do. He couldn't hold on any longer. And then when he got yeah. his head just peeking above, this guy standing there with a gun at his head. And when he fell down, again, hurt his ankle very badly, but he was making the calls. But what happened is the firing is very soon. So what yeah. they think is that this guy ran to his site, which he had all planned out with a gun. He ran to the site and he started shooting fast. And maybe that's why he he's missed. He, yeah. he, he got me, but it could have been... Could have been a yeah. much bigger problem. But he totally would have hit if you hadn't turned your head. There was a, it was a very near thing. It was so, a miracle. If I hadn't um, turned my head, yeah, I would not be talking to you right now. As much as I like you, exactly, I would not. Yeah, I would <laughs> well, not be talking. Yeah, to you. Be talking to you from another realm, perhaps. Yeah, that's um, right. We'd be talking from a so. different place. But it was a, it was a very terrible experience. The Butler Hospital, they did such a great job. The doctors were so good. Everybody was so good. There was a mistake. If somebody knew, because people were hearing, there was just a bad feeling that there was somebody was around that story in Aspen. And yeah. if somebody could have said, because they've oftentimes said, like, there'd be a lightning storm or something, because they've done, I think, over 300. I think I did a lot more than that, but we did a lot. And oftentimes they'll say, sir, could you wait 10 minutes, please? Sir, could you wait 20 minutes? There's a storm overhead or lightning or something. Yeah. And that happens often. Yeah. And this would have been a perfect time for that to have happened, but it didn't get coordinated. That was the problem. It was your, I think your actions in the fire in like, what I find admirable there was that you, you can't fake bravery under such circumstances. The courage is instinctual or it is not. It's not a rehearsed action. And so I just want to say that I think a lot of people admire your courage under fire there. And uh, yeah, so. Thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. I didn't, I don't think, I didn't think of it. I just wanted to get up and I wanted to stand up. I wanted to let them know. I felt I was good when they were on top of me, covering me actually, very much covering me and, and very bravely. But I wanted to get up. I said, I want to get up. And they wanted, they had, they have everything there. They have, they wanted to stretch you. I didn't like to, and I knew I was hit in the ear, but I knew I wasn't hit anywhere else. They felt I was hit someplace else. Yeah. It was such a, a lot of blood. And they were sure that I was hit someplace else. And they were saying, sir, what, you were hitting more than the ear. I said, nope, I was hit in the ear. I want to get up. Let me get up. And so we, I got up and the crowd didn't know what to think. This was so many people and they, you could see they were confused. They didn't know what to think. And I wanted to let them know I was okay. It was very important for me to let them yeah. know that. And they went wild. You've seen the after. They didn't go wild when yeah. I got up because they didn't know, was I alive? You really couldn't tell. When I stood up before the hand, before the, the fist in the air, they didn't know if I was alive. Nobody did. And when I put the fist up, they were just relieved and happy and thrilled. And uh, the place went crazy. It was pretty amazing. Yeah. It was a, it was a terrible well, was, thing, but it was, it was incredible, 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 incredibly moving. And speaking of the, the, the sort of slide that got you to turn that saved your life, really, was the illegal immigration slide. <laughs> Maybe this is worth talking about that. It was <laughs> that slide. That, illegal immigration <laughs> saved my life. Like, you're right. But it, was, <laughs> it had to be at that exact <laughs> angle. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> the incredible thing, though, when you talk about the odds, you had to be exactly at that angle. But the incredible yeah. thing is that the chart, I used it less than 20 percent of the time. It was just a moment. Yeah. It's always on my left, never my right. And it's always at the end of the speech. So yeah. here we have it. It's on the right, not the left. It's at the beginning, not the end. And even the people that put it up, they were unprepared. And, and they did a great job. They got it up immediately, fortunately. But I looked to the right and the bullet came whizzing by, hitting my ear. So it was amazing. But when you think of the odds of that, and yeah. that it, normally you wouldn't use it. Normally I wouldn't have the thing. And then yeah. it would have been a very different story. It's very much... I say an act of God. It's a miracle that it happened, and I'm honored sure. by it. I'm honored by it. What were you about to say about illegal immigration before you were rudely interrupted? I was going to say how good the numbers were. By the way, we're going back to Butler, and we're going to Great. go back in October. We're all set up, and we're the people are fantastic in Butler. It's a big it's a great area. Great. These are incredible people. Like the three that in the case of Corey killed and the other two, the families are, I got to know them a little bit and the families are great. But we're going back to Butler. And I think I'll probably start by saying, as I was saying, being exactly. so horribly so, interrupted. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, really interrupted by it. Yeah, so, um, no, but the chart, <laughs> some people have no matter. Elon, the chart <laughs> was just a chart that in my last week, we had the best illegal immigration numbers, meaning stopping. It was at the lowest. You've seen the chart. It's become a, quite a famous yeah, chart. Yeah. But that was yeah. the lowest yeah. point 
ever recorded. It was a really, I was very proud of those numbers. And then you see what happened with these people, Kamala and Joe, you see what happened. They just let it go. I had remain in Mexico policies. I had all these different policies that were so good. Guys like Tom Holman and Brandon Judd from Border Patrol. I, all These are all people that they've been on television. They said it's the best numbers we've ever had. We had so many different checks. Catch and release in Mexico, not the United. We had catch and release in the United States. We had it in Mexico. We had so many things. We had things where if people, many people come in there, they have contagious diseases. We had everything passed. If you have a contagious disease, I'm sorry, but we cannot allow you into the country. So we were sitting literally, <laughs> yeah. and I, all I was doing is showing that, and I, I use it sometimes. Sure. And in this case, I'm glad I used it. I can tell you that. But they were fantastic numbers. But I'm going to sleep with that chart always. I'm going to. I'll be sleeping with that chart. That chart was was very important for a lot of reasons. Well, would it be accurate to would it be accurate to say that you're supportive of legal immigration, but that we also need to shut down illegal immigration and especially unvetted illegal yes. immigration because you and, and that's not the same as saying that everyone who is an illegal immigrant is bad. In fact, I, I think most people who are illegal immigrants are actually good, but you can't tell the difference unless there's a solid vetting of who comes across the border. Does is, is that accurate? Represent your position? I, I say okay. it very simply: they have to come in legally. They have to be checked because, yeah. look, Kamala was the border czar. Now she's denying it. Everything that I do, she's saying <laughs> yeah. she was strong on the border. Uh, we're going to be strong. She doesn't have to say it. She could close it up right now. They could do things right now. It's, it's horrible. No tax on tips. And all of a sudden she's making a speech and saying there will be no tax on tips. I said that months ago. And by the way, they had just the opposite. They had not only tax on tips, but they hired 88,000 IRS agents. And many of them were assigned to go get waitresses and caddies and all of this on tips, they have a policy. They had a policy. They were really going to go after you and were really harassing people horribly. And then all of a sudden for politics, she says she comes out with what I said, which I think is terrible. And I think it's also hitting them very hard. These people are fake. Now they're also saying they did a good job in the border. We had the worst numbers in the history of the world, not of our country. There's never been a country in history that has had a kid to feel like this. We've had, I believe, you believe this too, you hear 12 yeah. million, 13, I believe it's over 20 million people came into our country, many yeah. coming from jails, from prisons, from uh, mental institutions, or a bigger version of that is yeah. insane asylums, and many are terrorists. And I'll tell you what, they're, they're coming not just from South America, they're coming from Africa, they're coming from all over the world, they're coming from Asia, yeah. they're coming from the Middle East, they're coming from countries that are stupidly and horribly bombing Israel October 7th. They're coming from all over the world. They, and you look at, it's so sad October 7th because it should have never happened. Yeah. It's so sad sure. when you look at Ukraine. It should have never happened. We have a defective yeah. government. These are defective people and they're not all that should be running it. But where you see it the best is the border because you had you have millions of people coming in a month and then she gets up and she tries to pretend like she's going to do something. She had three and a half years. And by the way, they have another five months that they can do something, but they yeah. won't do anything. It's all, she's no. incompetent and he's incompetent. And frankly, I think that she's more incompetent than he is. And that's saying something because he's not too good. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it's, it is essential to have a secure border. You're really not a country unless Correct. you have a secure border. And secure uh, elections. Yeah, absolutely, secure elections. And so it's, it's, it's just essential to have a real border or, or, or we, we can't function as a country. And our service, our central services are, are being overwhelmed in a lot of cities. And But I, I as, as we were talking about earlier, I think having a legal immigration pro process that is smooth and efficient and done well, and I'm speaking as someone who is a legal immigrant, and I think that one way to think of it is who do you want on your team? Who, who do you want on Team America? And I think we want to just say, OK, we want to let in people who are going to be great contributors to society and to our economy. Right. And, and who do you want on the team? And, and it's not to say that in my opinion, actually, I'd say probably most of the illegal immigrants actually are are actually good, hardworking people. That's my opinion. But some are not. And and you just have this sort of adverse election test where, you know, if, if somebody is somebody's like a career in, in theft or robbery, I, I don't understand what's taken them so long to get here because we're in such a target rich environment. Why don't, they, why don't more people who have a career in bad things come in here sooner because it's it's a piece of cake to go rob houses in L.A. or New York compared to other parts of the world. And, and in, in a lot of places in America, if, if you try to stop the person who's robbing you, you'll be arrested. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that's right. What, what's happening with crime? And our police are so good, but they're not allowed to do their job. But I have to tell you, Elon, they're I hate not. to say, because it's such a downer to say it. I hate to say it. 
I hate it, but you have a lot of people that just shouldn't be. I think it's a much bigger number than you think. They're allowing, again, right, they're yeah. allowing people from their jails. And if you were running one of these countries where they're coming from, you would have had all of them. As an example, uh, Venezuela, their crime is down 72 percent. They're taking their drug dealers. They're taking, frankly, their prisoners. They're emptying out their prisons. They're taking criminals, their murderers. They're rapists and they're delivering yeah. them into. But that's what Cass did on a much smaller yeah. scale. But this is a massive scale because this is being done worldwide. But here's what's happening: crime all over the world is down. And wait till you see the numbers <laughs> that we have. These, this is migrant crime. This is crime that's, that's going to be. Yeah. And I saw it today in New York where somebody was knifed, where they raped the girlfriend of a man that stood there watching in New York in one of the shelters. And started sure. pulling out the knives and bad things happen today. But this is happening every day. These are rough people. These are people that are in jail for yeah. murder and all sorts of things. And they're releasing them into our country. And they're telling them, if you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. So they don't want to come back. But these are rough people. Yeah. These, are, these are criminals that make our criminals look like nice people. And it's horrible what they're doing. And she's in charge of it because now she's trying to say sure. she had nothing to do with it. And she's such a liar because she was called the border czar the first day and it was on the headlines of every newspaper. She's the border czar. She never even went there. She went to one location, which had nothing to do with where the problem is. She went in and out because right. she was getting a lot of pressure, yeah, but yeah. had nothing to do with the problem. Yeah. But she was well, the well, border czar and you, the people yeah, can't yeah. allow them to get away with their disinformation campaign. Now she's trying to say that she wasn't she wasn't really involved. And the whole thing is horrible. She was totally in charge. She could have shut the border down without him. He didn't know what he was doing anyways. He wouldn't have even known yeah. what happened. You could shut the border down. He yeah. wouldn't even know the difference. The fact is that she was border czar. But if, you don't have to call yes. her that. The fact is you could just call her. She was in charge of the border. And the border was the worst right. ever. It's simply not work. Whether it's by whether it's by whether it's a question of intention or competence, we don't have a secure border, and we have people streaming over like it looks like a World World War Z zombie apocalypse at times. And sometimes you you you, you got to wonder, is it real or not? So I because you see things, and you're like, is it real? I, I so I went to the border at Eagle Pass, and I saw for myself in Texas, and I was like, okay, it's real. This, I'm like seeing this in real time. I actually posted the video like just live. I just flew there one day and just to see, hey, is this made up or real? And I'm I, and just seeing people stream across the border. And and I have to say, at least the people that I saw did not look friendly. These, these people, people can look at my video and say, yeah, hey, these yeah. people look friendly. I don't look super friendly. So These are people that um, Elon would not be the same man he had to walk across the street and look these people in the eye. These are rough people. These are really rough people coming across. And I know rough people. And these are people that we don't want in our country. And the car running one of these countries where they're coming from, you would have had all of them. As an example, uh, Venezuela... Their crime is down 72 percent. You would have had all of them. As an example, uh, Venezuela, their crime is down 72 percent. They're taking their drug dealers. They're taking, frankly, their prisoners. They're emptying out their prisons. They're taking criminals, their murderers, their rapists, and they're delivering yeah. them into. But that's what Cass did yeah. on a much smaller yeah. scale. But this is a massive scale because this is being done worldwide. But here's what's happening. Crime all over the world is down. And wait till you see the numbers that we have. These, this is migrant crime. This is crime that's, that's going to be. Yeah. And I saw it today in New York where somebody was knifed, where they raped the girlfriend of a man that stood there watching in New York in one of the shelters and uh, started sure. pulling out the knives and bad things happen today. But this is happening every day. These are rough people. These are people that are in jail for yeah. murder and all sorts of things. And they're releasing them into our country. And they're telling them, if you come back, we're going to kill you. We're going to give you the death penalty or kill you. So they don't want to come back. But these are rough people. Yeah. These, are, these are criminals that make our criminals look like nice people. And it's horrible what they're doing. And she's in charge of it because now she's trying to say sure. she had nothing to do with it. And she's such a liar because she was called the border czar the first day and it was on the headlines of every newspaper. She's the border czar. She never even went there. She went to one location, which had nothing to do with where the problem is. She went in and out, right. I guess, because she was getting a lot of pressure. Yeah. Had nothing to do with the problem. Yeah. But she was well, the well, border czar. And you, the people yeah, can't yeah. allow them to get away with their disinformation campaign. Now she's trying to say that she wasn't she wasn't really involved. And the whole thing is horrible. She was totally in charge. She could have shut the border down without him. He didn't know what he was doing anyways. He wouldn't have even known yeah. what happened. You could shut the border down. He yeah. wouldn't even know the difference. The fact is that she was border czar. But if, you don't have to call yes. her that. The fact is you could just call her. She was in charge of the border. 
and the border was the worst right. ever. It's simply not working. No. Whether it's by whether it's by whether it's a question of intention or competence, the way we, we we don't have a secure border, and we have people streaming over like it looks like a World World War Z zombie apocalypse at times. And sometimes you you got to wonder like, is it real or not? So I because you see things, and you're like, is it real? I, I so I went to the border at Eagle Pass, and I saw for myself in Texas, and I was like, okay, it's real. I'm like seeing this in real time. I actually posted the video like just live. I just flew there one day and just to see, hey, is this made up or real? And I'm, I, I'm just seeing people stream across the border. And and I have to say, at least the people that I saw did not look friendly. These, so these people, people, people can look at my video and say, yeah. hey, these people, these yeah. people look friendly. I, I don't look super friendly. So These are people that um, Elon would not be the same man. He had to walk across the street and look these people in the eye. These are rough people. These are really rough people coming across. And I know rough people. And these are people that we don't want in our country. And the caravans are coming in and they're putting, and who's doing this is the heads of the country. You would be doing yeah. it and so would I. And everyone would say, oh, what a terrible thing to say. The fact is, it's brilliant for them because they're all of their bad people, really bad people. And I hate to say this, the reason the numbers are much bigger than you would think is they're also taking their non-productive people. Now, these aren't people that will kill you. We have enough of them. But these are people that are non-productive. They are just not productive for whatever reason. They're not yeah, workers yeah. or they don't want to work or whatever. And these countries are getting rid of non-productive people in the caravans in many cases. And they're also getting rid of their murderers and their drug dealers and the people that are really yeah. brutal people. And they're coming into our country yeah. at levels that have never been seen before. And I saw an ad just before I got on the air. I'm, I'm walking over here. And I saw an ad by Kamala saying how she is going to provide for security. Where has she been for three and a half years? For three and a half years, yes. we have 20 million this, this, people. This, this, yeah, I think this, frankly, I, I think this is a fundamental existential issue for the United States. And if we have another four more years of open borders, and it's going to be even worse with another four more years, it's going to be even worse than it's been for the past three and a half years. I'm not sure we've got a country. You don't have a country, Elon. Elon. If they get in, you will have 50 to 60 million people from all over the world, not South America only. We think of South America, we think of Honduras and El Salvador, Guatemala and Mexico, the four. But it's not that. It's everywhere. They're coming in from everywhere. Yeah, it, and I had to stay in Mexico. Yeah, I think this is a super important yeah. point. Like people, it's well, basically when I went down there, I was like, where are people from? It's like almost no one was from Mexico. Mexico it's, it's just a border with Mexico. But the people coming in, it's it's Earth. The rest of Earth and, and America is, is only, you know, about four, four or five percent of the population of Earth. It, it would only take a few percent of the rest of Earth to overwhelm everything. In We're the already West. overwhelmed. So, We're overwhelmed. You had to see the news tonight about New York. And I love that place. And what they're doing to it is horrible what they're doing to it. And all the courts do is they yeah. try and focus on Trump. OK, they, let's focus on Trump, who did nothing wrong. I come out of a rigged election. Elon, it, what's happened is unbelievable. You have from Africa. From the Congo, they're coming from the Congo and 22 people came in from the Congo recently and they're murderers and they dropped them. They, they drop them. They take them out of jails, which is very expensive to maintain the jails. Although they don't do too much maintaining, I can tell you, but they take them out of jails, prisons. They take them out and they bring them to the United States. They deposit them in the United States and say, don't ever come back. Or you're going to be executed and they don't want to come back, but uh, they won't come back. Sure. But they're coming from Africa. They're coming from Asia. They're coming from the Middle East. They're coming from South America. Well, they're Earth. coming from Earth everywhere. Earth, and there are a lot of really yeah, bad ones. It's uh, just a... It's just an everywhere on Earth thing, and it's just not possible for the United States to absorb everyone from Earth or even a few percent of the rest of Earth. It's just not possible. So, and we're going to have, uh, just, to, uh, just yeah. to finish this up, we're going to have the largest deportation in history of this country, and we have no choice. Otherwise, we're going to have a country, what, what they've done to our country. Think of it. With in Venezuela and in some of these other countries, crime is down 50, 60, 70, 80 percent. And you would be the same. You would. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what. Venezuela has not been of all of them. They've gotten rid of about 70 percent really bad people. Their jails are about 50 percent put into the United States. The same with other countries. Sure. Some are 30 percent. Some are 50 percent. They're all different. But the bottom line is they're all going to be at 100 percent. Why wouldn't you put 100 percent? of? Yeah. And they're doing it right now while this third rate phony candidate. Don't forget, I beat Biden. He failed in the debate miserably. And some people said, oh, gee, it's too bad. It's too bad he did so badly, or I did well in the debate. But the first night they said, wow, one of the people at CNN said that was the greatest debate performance 
I've ever witnessed. And then two days later, they didn't talk about that. They just said he was bad. But that's okay. That's the way I get treated. And I don't mind that at all. What I can tell you is this. We cannot have a Democrat. We cannot have her. She's incompetent. She's as bad as Biden in a different. He hasn't done an interview since this whole scam started. And say what you want. This was a coup. This was a coup of a president of the United States. He didn't want to leave. And they said we can do it the nice way or we can do it the hard way. Yeah, they just took him out back behind the shed and basically shot him. Yeah. With this guy. So, and I'm no yeah. fan of his. And he was a horrible president, the worst president in his. And one of the reasons he was so bad, first of all, the Israeli attack would have never happened. Russia would never have attacked Ukraine and we'd have no inflation. And we wouldn't have had the Afghanistan mess, if you think of it. Well, and we wouldn't have had Afghanistan. Yeah. But we think of well, it. We, yeah. we, you take a few of those events away and we have a different world. We would also have no, no, no inflation yeah. was caused by oil. Yeah, no, no, you, you, I think you make an excellent point here, which is that when other countries can, that, that are, are thinking about invading or doing bad things, when they're thinking about that, they're thinking about, OK, what's the American president going to do? And are, do they fear the American president uh, or is it someone they, they do not respect or and do not fear? And I think they they do but rightfully be look at the, the, the footage of the assassination. They're like, OK, the president Trump is, is don't mess with me. That's whereas I think people are are not going to be and they obviously have not been at all intimidated by Biden and they certainly will not be intimidated by Kamala. And you have to really think of that in the context of global security. That's that if the American president is someone that evil dictators are scared of, that makes a huge difference to the security of the world. So I had a good relationship with Putin, despite the Russia hoax that lasted for over two years, just a hoax created by Hillary Clinton and Adam Shifty Schiff, some just bad people, just sick people, frankly. Schiff Schiff is a sick person. He's going to end up probably being a senator. It's hard to believe. The whole thing is hard to believe. But they put our danger with that stuff, too. They actually, when they make up stories and you have to fight your way out of it for a long time. But I know Putin very well. I got along with him very well. Affected me. And it's just one of those things. And he would, we would talk a lot about Ukraine. It was the apple of his eye. But I said, don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. I shut down Nord Stream 2. That was the big oil pipeline, the biggest, I think, the biggest pipeline in the world going all over Europe. I shut it down. Biden came. And then they said, yeah. I was, I loved Russia. I was a friend of Putin and I loved Russia. No. He actually said to me one time, he said, if you're my friend, I'd hate to see you as an enemy. I shut down his pipeline. The biggest pipeline. They were looking at that yeah. to fund. And this pathetic president gets in there. And the first thing he did, one of the early things he did is he, he shut down Keystone XL pipeline, which is our pipeline that would have employed 48,000 people, pipeline workers, shuts it down. That was a massive job that Obama refused to allow. Yeah. I allowed it in my first week because it was jobs and it moved oil. And by the way, in a much more environmentally friendly way, it's underground. It's not a truck that catches on fire or a train that catches on fire. But think of it. He shut down the XL pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline. He shuts that down and he approves the Russian pipeline. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. (laughs) It's it's inconsistent, certainly. But I think it's just worth emphasizing to listeners immense importance of whether the United States president is intimidating or not intimidating and how much that matters to global security. There's some real tough characters out there. And if they don't think the American president is tough, they will do what they want to do. I know every one uh, of and them. And that's what's all, put that, the yep. whole world in danger. Elon, I know every one it's of them and deal. I know them well. I know Putin. Yeah. I know President Xi. I know Kim Jong-un of North Korea. I know every one of them. And let me tell you, people will say, oh, this is terrible. He said, I'm not saying anything good or bad. They're at the top of their game. They're tough. They're smart. They're vicious. And they're going to protect their country, whether they love their country. They probably do. It's just a different form of love, but they're going to protect their country. But these are tough people at the top of their game. And when they see a Kamala or when they see a Biden, Sleepy Joe, they can't even believe it. They can't believe this happened. All the stuff that you're seeing now, all the horror that you look at Israel, they're all waiting for an attack from Iran. Iran would not be attacking, believe me. When I was there and I say it with respect, because I think we would have been good with Iran. I don't want to do anything bad to Iran, but they knew not to mess around. Iran was broke because I told China, if you buy from Iran oil, it's all about the oil. That's where the money is. But if you buy oil from Iran, you're not going to do any business with the United States. And I meant it. And they said, we'll pass. They didn't. Other countries, likewise, you want to buy, you're not doing business with the United States. And they were at a point where they were, they had no money for Hamas. They had no money for Hezbollah. They had no money for any of these instruments of terror. And it was amazing. In fact, the articles when I was leaving, which is hard to believe, actually, especially when you look at what's happened to our country is so bad right now. It's such a different place. We were respected. Think of it. Four years ago, we were so respected to a point where 
when I said don't buy oil, they didn't buy oil, but they had no money yeah, yeah. and Israel would have never been attacked. It is zero chance. And again, I said to Vladimir Putin, I said, don't do it. You can't do it, Vladimir. You do it. It's going to be a bad day. You cannot do it. And I told him things that what I do. And he said, no way. And I said, way. And it's the last time we ever had the conversation. He would never have done. I got along well with him. I hope to get along with, well with him again. Getting along well with them is a good thing, not a bad thing. I got along well with yeah. Kim Jong-un. When I met with President Obama just before entering it's a, sort of a ritual, and I sat down with him and we talked. It was supposed to be for a very short period of time. It turned out to be a long period of time. I said, what's the biggest problem? He said, North Korea. I had that problem worked out very quickly. It was nasty at the beginning with Rocket Man and all the different things. Yeah. But all of a sudden, but, I got those, a call. Those, those were some epic tweets, by the way. Yeah, they were, really no, they were actually... epic everything. He said that he has a red button on his desk. I said, I have a red button on my desk, too, but my red button is much bigger and my red works. And then I called him yeah. Little Rocket Man of Little Rocket Man. Anyway, here's the bottom line. All of a sudden, I got a call from him. And they said they want to meet. They want to meet me. And we met, yeah. as you remember, we met in Singapore. We met also in Vietnam. And I got along with them great. We yeah. were in no danger. It, but yeah. President Obama, because, President Obama thought there was we were going to end up yeah. in a war, a nuclear war with him. And let me tell you, he's yeah, got a lot true. of nuclear stuff. Yeah, too. Exactly. He's got plenty of nuclear. It's, he can do plenty of it's, damage. Yes, yeah, it's, it's because people like like Kim, Kim Jong, they respond to strength, yeah. not weakness. Well, and, and, he and, and I got. And a, he and I had a good strength, relationship. Remember, I yeah. remember I met him, and and we walked onto his land. Nobody ever walked onto his land before. I walked onto. I wouldn't say. Yeah. Let's bring up cool. Secret Service again. I wouldn't say they were thrilled when I did that. I walked onto his land, and it was an amazing period. But we were not into with him because of me. I always yeah. say that we have enemies on the outside, and we have enemies on the inside. We have some really bad people in our government, and people that are, and controlling of the people. I'd mention names, but I, I don't, I really don't want to give the credit. But we have some really bad, and I say they're more dangerous than Russia and China. If, if you have a, a smart president, a president that gets it, we are not in danger from those countries because they need us and they need our help. We forced Obama, if you think about it, Obama and Biden and Bush to a certain extent, in all fairness, forced Russia and China together. And if you're a history, first thing you learn is you cannot let Russia and China align. But then they also got, if you take a look, Iran and they have North Korea. That's they call it the access of evil. In the old days, you had the access of evil. Here we have today access of evil. These are powerful countries, very heavy nuclear, which is the biggest threat. Yeah. The biggest threat is not global warming, where the ocean is going to rise one of an inch over the next 400 years. The big and you'll have more you'll have more ocean front property. Right. The biggest threat is not that the biggest threat is nuclear warming, because we have five countries now that have significant nuclear power and we have to not allow anything to happen with stupid people like Biden. Biden did something with Russia. There was no chance of him ever going in. And when I left and then after I left, they started forming big armies on there on the border with Ukraine. And I looked at that and I thought he was doing that because Putin's a good negotiator. I thought he was doing that to negotiate. But then Biden started saying such stupid things. For instance, he said that it can be a NATO country. Now, Putin, Russia, for as long as there's been NATO, has said, we're never going to agree to that. And we go right up front and say that. And we did things and said things through this president with a low IQ, very low IQ. He had a low IQ 30 years ago, by the way, but now he might not even have a IQ at all. There is no, there's nothing on the board that goes this low. He said things that were so stupid that that war would have been that war had zero chance of happening if I were there. Zero chance. He was saying everything the opposite. And it's so sad because many more people in Ukraine than you read about. You don't read about how bloody it is and how does it. Sure. Hey, look, just in the two armies, you lost a half a million people. And, yeah, and you're right. having a hard time. Ukraine, I don't know if you saw yeah. the article recently, and it's true. You don't hear the true story. But if you think about it, Russia's gone. Russia defeated Germany with us. And they defeated Napoleon. They've been around a long time. They're a big fighting force. Yeah, it's course. very unfair. And Ukraine now doesn't have enough men. They're now using young men and very old men to fight. And it, we're in a very bad position. And I'm not going to blame exclusively, but I can tell you, I could have stopped that. And a smart president could have stopped that. It wouldn't have happened. But we yeah. had a man that actually made it, it made it more prevalent. It was so bad. The words that he was using 
the stupid threats coming from a stupid face that he was using. I said, this guy's going to cause us a war. He's going to cause us. And let me tell you, yeah, it can yeah. lead to World War Three. That can lead to World War Three. The Middle East can lead to. We have numerous places that could end up in yeah. World War Three now for no reason whatsoever. No, I, think, I think you're right. I think people under underrate the risk of World War Three. And it's just when looking at the risk of global thermonuclear warfare, it's game over for humanity. And that's it's something that people have, I think, after the end of the people have become complacent about. But they actually have forgotten that there are currently a lot of nuclear missiles that that, that are that, that have targeting parameters for the United States. And one of the things and, we're going to do uh, is we're going to bend dome over us. We're, Israel has it. We're going to have the best Iron Dome in the world. We need it. And we're going to make it all in the United States. But we're going to have we're going to have protection because it just takes one maniac to start something. We're going to have protection and we're going to have. Why shouldn't we have an Iron Dome? Israel has one. Some other places yeah. have one that nobody even knows about, frankly. But Israel has it. We're going to have an Iron Dome. With all of that being said, to me, that's so important, the most important. But with all of that being said, the election's coming up and the people want to hear about the economy. And the fact you can't buy groceries because they don't have enough money to buy groceries. The inflation has killed them. Food prices are up 50, 60, even 100 percent in some cases. And this stupid administration allowed this to happen. And it's a shame. And that's the thing that people most care about, in my opinion. They care about the border a lot. And we discuss the border at great length. It's it's nice to have a forum like this where I can discuss something. And by the way, you think Biden could do this interview? Do you think that Kamala (laughs) could do this interview? They would take a pass. So they don't need Elon They don't need Elon screaming out questions. It's pretty sad when you think that somebody that does this for a living can't answer a question or is afraid to do an interview. And in her case, with a very friendly interview, she's got all friendly interviewers. It's pretty sad. Yes, absolutely. But the big thing now is the economy, Elon. And as much as I view nuclear as the single most important thing, but a lot of people don't don't understand that, but it doesn't have to. If I understand it, that's all you need, because if I was president, you're not going to have that kind of a problem. But the thing that they really is making them angry is what Kamala and Biden have allowed to happen to the economy. It's a disaster with inflation. The inflation, it doesn't matter what you make. The inflation has eaten you alive. If you're a worker or if you're a just a a middle income person, you can't afford four years ago, five years ago, people were saving a lot of money. Today, they're using all their money and borrowing money just to live. It's it's a horrible thing that's happening. And we'll end that. Yeah. A lot of people just don't understand where inflation comes from. Inflation comes from government overspending because the checks never bounce when it's written by the government. So if the government spends far more than it brings in, that increases the money supply. And if the money supply increases faster than the rate of goods and services, that's inflation. So really, we need to have, we need to reduce our government spending and we need to re-examine, I think we need like a government efficiency commission to say, hey, where are we spending money that's sensible? Where is it not sensible? Right. And we need to live within our, our means. We, we're, we're currently adding, I think, a trillion dollars to the deficit every, roughly right. every hundred days. And the, the interest payments on the national debt have now exceeded the defense budget. It's on the order of a trillion dollars. It's interest. And, it's, and it keeps yeah, growing. I rebuilt our military, largely rebuilt our military, did a great job on it, which was so important. We had jets, we had fighters that were, and bombers that were 70 years old. And we, we did a great job on that. Then we, by the way, then we gave 85 billion of it back to Afghanistan, if you can believe it. We gave them 85 billion. They're one of the largest sellers yeah. of military equipment in the world. They're selling what we gave them. That was one of the most embarrassing days in the history of our country. But if you think about, go, let's go back to the, the economy, we have to bring energy yeah. prices down. Energy started it. The price of gasoline. Now, your cars don't require too much gasoline. You're, you have a good and you do make a great product, I have to say. I have to be honest with uh, you. That you. doesn't mean everybody should have an electric car. But these are minor details. But your, your product is incredible. But the thank gasoline, you. Elon, is the cost of energy. Not only gasoline, it's the cost of heating your house and cooling your house. That has sure. to come down. It, it's it gone up 100%, 150 and 200%. That has to come down. When that comes down, and we're going to yeah. drill, baby, drill. They stopped drilling, and then they went back to drilling because they went back to the Trump policy. But if they won, the day after they get into office, we're going to, this country will go out of business because they're going to go to an energy policy that's not sustainable. Wind, different things, you're not going to have any. Yeah. And I know you're a big fan of the AI, <laughs> and I have to say yeah. that, AI, and this is shocking to me, but AI requires twice the energy that the country already produces for everything. You're going to have to build, we're going to have to build a lot of energy if our country will be competitive with China, because that's our primary competitor for this on the AI. You're going to need a lot of electricity. You're going to need tremendous electricity, like almost double what we produce now for the whole country, if you can believe it.
Sure. Just going, you know, back to this, like the, the SpaceX thing, which is that people try to make it sound complicated, but it's not. But inflation was by government overspending. Right. Would you agree that we need to take a look at government spending yes. and have perhaps like a government efficiency commission that, that just look, tries to make the spending sensible and so the country lives within its means, just like a person The does? waste is incredible. And it's it, it, nobody negotiates prices. Uh, you used to have a lot of people making jets and you end up with two companies. They'll probably try and merge at some point. You, I went through it. Like Air Force, just a, a thing like, Air Force One, one of the first documents they asked me to sign, a general walks said, sir, will you please sign this document? What is it? Air Force One, that's with Boeing, which is basically two planes, two 747s. And the price was $5.7 yeah. $5. billion for two planes. Now, <laughs> they're highly sophisticated, <laughs> even nicer than your plane, okay? But much more sophisticated. They're very, I won't say what's on it, but they got a lot of stuff on it. Anyway, but it's 5.7. Sure. That's a crazy that's number. It's a crazy number. But I said, I'm not going to pay 5.7. I'm not going to do it. I said, who made the deal? Obama and his people. I said, well, then I know the deal's no good. I'm not going to do it. And over the course of about four weeks, by my saying I'm not going to do it, I got the price reduced by $1.6 billion for the exact same plane, other than we had a nicer paint job, if you want to know the truth. But for the exact same plane, I got, I saved one. And I said to Boeing, man, you guys must make a lot of money if you can reduce the price by that. But now what I do hear is that they're going back to the Biden administration and wanting big cost overruns because they see these dopey suckers in there and they'll end up getting uh, some of the money back. But I shaved it by $1.6 billion for the exact same plan. And, and you can now take that and multiply that out times thousands of other exactly. items. And, yeah, the numbers are and, yeah. astronomical. Yeah. I agree with you. If so, I mean, I think it would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that takes a look at uh, at, at these things and just ensures that the taxpayer money, the, the taxpayers' hard-earned money, is spent in a good way. And I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. I'd love if, it if it were fun. You're the greatest cutter. I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, "You want to quit?" They go <laughs> yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike, and you say, "That's okay. You're all gone." You're all gone. So every one of you is gone and you are the greatest. You would be very good. Oh, you would love it. But if you look at RG, well, I'd be happy yeah, to help by the way, congratulations. Yeah. I just looked at the number of people that are listening to you and I chat. We'll call it a chat. But yeah. congratulations. This is very good. It's great. It's, and, and you're an interesting character. The new head of a place called Argentina. And he was he's a big, you know, he's, he's great. And yeah. he's a big MAGA fan. You know that he ran on MAGA and he took it to an extreme, too. He ran on MAGA, and I hear he's doing really a terrific job. It's called Make Argentina Great Again. It worked out perfectly. He came in and bought a lot of hats. He brought over it. But he's doing a big job. He really cut. And I'm hearing yeah. they're starting to do pretty well. Inflation's getting down. They had 1,000%. Yeah, exactly. They had inflation, not normal inflation. They had the, the real deal. But we're going to yeah. have that pretty soon. We, we have, I think we yeah. have the worst inflation we've had in 100 years. They say it's 48 years. I don't believe it. I think we have the worst. They yeah. don't include a lot of the items that should be included. Yeah, it's just from government overspending and, and not just not spending taxpayer money yeah. e effectively and having just so many departments, you, you can't even name them all. And what Malay is doing is he's cutting government spending. He's simplifying things. He's having you know, putting in regulations that make sense. And I and we're Argentina o overnight is experiencing a giant improvement right. in prosperity. But it's also a lesson for the United States, which is that Argentina used to be one of the most prosperous countries in the world in, in the like in the 30s, 40s. And because of bad government policy, it ruined the country. And if you take Venezuela, for example, Venezuela should be incredibly prosperous. They, they have phenomenal reserves of, of everything, oil, everything. And uh, it should be prosperous. But if the government's wrong, it, it impoverishes the people. And so I think we should not be complacent in the United States and thinking that and taking out prosperity for granted, because if, if with bad government policy on the country into the ground, and that's just something people should bear in mind, prosperity for granted. Well, think of education. So we're ranked at the bottom of every list of the top 40. We're ranked number 40, number 38. Norway, Switzerland, Sweden, uh, different countries are ranked good. Actually, China's pretty close to the top. They're a top six or seven. But we're ranked at the bottom, almost at the bottom, 38, 39, 40. In other words, horrible. And yet we spend more per pupil than any other country in the world. So we spend more. And what I'm going to do, one of the first acts, and this is where I, I need an Elon Musk. I need somebody that has a lot of strength and courage and smarts. I want to close up Department of Education, move education back to the states where states like Iowa, where state Idaho, not every state will do great because the states that basically aren't doing good now. You look at Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. He he's terrible. He does a terrible job. So he's not going to do great with education. But of the of, yeah. I would bet that 35 would do 
great. And 15 yeah. of them or 20 of them will be as good as Norway. Norway is considered great. You can name them. It's just, they're so good. Some yeah. of these countries are so good. But if, if you go into some of these really well-run states, we have states that don't know what debt is. We have states that are have low taxes, no debt, everybody working. They're really well run. And maybe they have certain edges in terms of location, in terms of the land or the sun and the water and the whole thing. There are a lot of advantages to some people. But if you moved education back to the 50, you'll have some that won't do well, but you'll have, but it, they'll actually be forced to do better because it'll be a pretty bad situation. But, yeah, but if you think about well, it, yeah. you'll have some yeah, of yeah. these states. I'll bet you'd have 30, 35 states. It'll be much better. And you know what it'll cost? Less than half. Yeah what it is in uh, Washington. These people don't care about well, yeah. the students in these faraway states, and it would be, well, it'd be unbelievable. Yeah, I think you're making a good point in that the states have to, if each individual, if each state has to compete against other states, then people will naturally right. uh, move to states where it's better. California, um, as we said, it's a badly run state. I could go through, I got so many friends that are in those states, even if they're Democrat, I hate to mention certain states, but Illinois is badly run with Pritzker. He's a real loser. Some of these places just badly run. It's almost going to force them to run better. They won't do good initially, but can, you're not going to do worse than you're doing right now. And I would say that yeah. the cost, you would cut your cost by 50 or 60 percent. And you'd have a little yeah, monitor. Yeah. You want to make sure they're teaching English, as an example. Give us yeah. a little English, right? Sure. No, but some of these governors are, are doing so badly. they got so many people moving out of their state. They should get U-Haul salesmen. They're driving so much U-Haul. People move it out. Isn't you know? it amazing <laughs> to you as a businessman that they can even survive? Like Illinois, so many people are leaving. And you wonder, how do they survive? How do they survive? I saw where you left California and you moved to Texas. Texas does a great job. I just wonder, how do these states survive when big businesses, a big oil company just left California when they moved to Texas, how do these big states survive when they lose so many businesses and their taxes are already really high? The taxes are among the highest yeah. taxes. You, you almost wonder, how do they continue on? And in many cases, the governors don't do a good job and they're crime-ridden places. You wonder, how do they continue to just go on? It's well, not I, a good I think, situation. I think I think the thing that's the only thing that's going to force some of these states to change is if they risk bankruptcy and they're not getting bailed out by the federal right. government. That's, gonna, that's the only thing that's that. going to get them changed. You remember the area yeah. in California where they had that, where I guess somebody had sticky fingers and they stole a lot of money. And they went into a, a foyer and it was very nasty yeah, yeah. for a period of time. But now it's probably the most popular place in all of California. At some point, something like that may have to happen. But the problem is that you can't penalize people that loan money to the state when you have incompetent people like a Pritzker. Look, the family didn't want him in the family business. And then he ends up being governor of Illinois. Why? Is he going to be is he going to be a great governor? And you have people I could name every one of them. I got to know every one of yep. these. And some are very some are just horrible. I think that the larger point here, too, and as, as you're saying, like the, a lot of people are concerned about the economy, a lot of people are concerned about inflation. And inflation is effectively a tax on people that save money and for people that are working day to day. It's just, it's just a form of taxation. And, and if, if we can solve the government spending problem, we'll solve the inflation problem, which means people will have a better standard of living. Yeah. That's a really big well, deal. Well, the people that got hurt um, worst are the people that did it the way they were taught to do it all through their younger life and their young life and their whole life. The people that saved money. And then they got no interest on their money and inflation destroyed them. And frankly, they were almost better off if they didn't do anything like that. Those people have been absolutely decimated. And we're going to bring those people back and help those people. We've got to get the prices down. When I look at bacon costing five, four or five times more than it did a few years ago. Sure. When you look at some of the food products and, and grocery stores, people go, they can't believe it. They used to be able to buy a whole cart. And today, a lot of people just don't have the money. They go in and they can't buy anything. They look at yeah, sticker shock. They it, call it sticker yeah. shock. I, I think it really just comes, like I said, I think it just comes down to, to, to really, I guess to, really to, two things, which is that if, if you solve a government overspending, you solve inflation, which improves the living right. standards of the, the average person. And then if you uh, deregulate, have sensible regulations, because a lot of the, re the regulations are nonsensical and, and cause uh, the cost to be extreme for no reason. And the, the, But unless you've got effective deregulation, like Reagan did, did a great job on deregulation in the 80s, but it's been 40 years since we had not really during your administration we, we made some progress but i think the opportunity to make i think radical progress with sensible regulation and if, if well, those two things yeah those are the big yeah, deals we set a record we set a we did more deregulation and more restrictions on all of the different businesses than any other president i remember i had the rule for everyone we put in you have to get rid of t at 10 or 12 
And we, we did <laughs> yeah. radical cuts on all of that. And a lot of that's being put back by this situation. And we did radical cuts on things that weren't necessary. But we were all set. We had the best economy ever maybe in the world. And then what happened is COVID came in and we had to focus on that. And nobody knew what it was. And I always say I got good marks on economy, good marks on military. We knocked out ISIS. We did different things. We rebuilt. I never got the credit that we really deserved on what we did with COVID. We never got the credit. But we were, if had that not happened, a gift from China, from Wuhan, came in from Wuhan, the Wuhan labs, and I always said it and it turned out to be right. But had that not happened, we were set to start reducing debt. We we're going to reduce taxes further. I gave the largest tax cuts and we were going to reduce taxes still further for middle income people, not only businesses, but we did it for businesses because sure. they're the ones that that's why we had the great job numbers. But we were set to really start reducing debt. And we were sitting on the biggest pile of liquid gold anywhere in the world, bigger than Saudi Arabia, bigger than Russia. And we were going to drill and we were going to make so much money. We were going to supply Europe with oil. I had stopped the Russian pipeline and we were going to supply them with oil and gas. We were going to, we were going to make a fortune. And then the COVID came in and we had a, we really had to divert. Then what happened is when they came in, we kept a lot of businesses alive. If I didn't do what we did, we would have had a 1929 type depression. But the problem is when Biden came in, he got trillions of dollars and just started spending it stupidly. You didn't need it anymore. We got over that bad period where it was, everybody was, dying and it was just not a good period. Interestingly, during his administration, many more people died during his administration of COVID than during my administration. And we really got the brunt of it. But people don't realize more people died during his administration than ours. But it diverted us from doing what I wanted to do. But we had the greatest for almost three years. We had, and you know that probably better than anybody. So many of your friends said to me, the best years we've ever had in business were during the Trump years and also said that African-American, Hispanic-American were so incredible. They were having the best Asian-American women, men, young people without a diploma, young people that graduated from the best colleges, from MIT, from the Wharton School, from all of the great colleges, Harvard. They were doing better and people without a diploma were doing better. And everybody was happy. And then COVID had it. Sure. The problem is they spent trillions and trillions of dollars. They wasted. They shouldn't have taken any money and we wouldn't be having inflation right now, which is killing our country. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I should probably say something about like, my views on you know, climate change yeah. and oil and gas, because uh, I think I probably different from what most people would assume because I, my, my views are actually pretty, I think, moderate in this regard, which is that I, I don't think we should vilify the oil and gas industry and the people that have worked very hard in those industries to provide the necessary energy to support the economy. And if we were to stop using oil and gas right now, uh, we would all be starving and the economy would collapse. So it's I don't think it's right to vilify the oil and gas industry. And I and I the world has a certain demand for oil and gas, and it's probably better if the United States provides that than, than some other countries. Sure. Um, and, and, and it would help with prosperity in the U.S. And at, at the same time, obviously, my, my view is we do over time want to move to a, a sustainable energy economy because eventually you do run out of you run out of oil and gas. It's, it's not there. For, it's not infinite. And there is some risk. I think it's not it, the risk is not as high as you know, a lot of people say it is with respect to global warming. But I think if you just keep increasing the cost of money in, in the atmosphere enough, eventually it actually simply gets uncomfortable comfortable to to breathe. People don't realize this. If, the, if you go to, if you go past a thousand parts per million of CO2, you start getting headaches and nausea. And so we're, we're now in the sort of 400 range. We're adding, I think, about roughly two parts per million per year. So it gives us, so what it means is we still have quite a bit of time, but so there's not, we don't need to to rush and, and we don't need to like stop farmers from farming or prevent people from having steaks or right. basic stuff right. like that. Le leave the farmers alone. I agree. <laughs> How crazy opinion. is that where you have farmers that are not allowed to farm anymore and have to get rid of their cattle and the whole world yeah, is a little silly. crazy, but it's largely taken its lead from us. I, I just say though, I've heard in terms of the fossil fuel, because even to create your electric car and create the electricity needed for the electric car, Fossil fuel is what really creates that at the generating plants. And so you can't get away from it at this moment. Someday you might be able to. I do here we have anywhere from 100 to 500 years left. Much of it hasn't even been found yet. Yeah. But there are tremendous, like Anwar. I got Anwar in Alaska approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. Everybody tried. Nobody could do it. I got it approved. The first thing that Biden did was unimprove it, it to, to get rid of it. He uh, ended yeah. it. His, his secretary went in and she ended it. 
and what a dis- that's Anwar. That's bigger, or they think it could be bigger than Saudi Arabia in Alaska. Could be bigger than Saudi Arabia. But they went in and they terminated it. And I'll get it going very quickly because not only is it big for Alaska, I mean, you talk about economic development, that for the United States, I mean, that that is, they say bigger than Saudi Arabia or the same size and pure, really yeah. good stuff. And they end it. So I think we have perhaps hundreds of years left. Nobody really knows. But during yeah, that time, I, 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 some people will come around. That will yeah, be very good. Yeah. Right. My answer would be a little more aggressive than that, but it's, it's not the sort of like we're all going to die in five years. That's obviously BS. But my view is if you just look at the parts per million that increments every year, you get two or three parts per million every year of CO2. Uh, it, my, I, I think some of that it, it's problematic if it accelerates, if you start going from two or three right. to say five. And then there may be some situations where uh, you get a step change increase in the zoo. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it, it, we don't want to get too close to a thousand uh, PPM because that's actually makes it uncomfortable to breathe. Like just existing in, in a thousand PPM CO2 is uncomfortable. That's, that's like a, that's considered like an industrial hazard. Right. <laughs> just, so it's, that's actually, you start getting headaches and stuff. So it's even, even without global warming, it's not comfortable to live. So you, you don't want to get too close to that. But I think we've got, I think we want to just move over. And if, I don't know, 50 to a hundred years from now, we're, um, we're, I don't know, mostly uh, sustainable. I think that'll probably be okay. So it's, it's, it's not like the, the house is on, on fire immediately, but it, it, I think it, it is something we, we need to move towards. On, on balance, it's probably better to move there faster than slower. But, but like I said, without vilifying the oil and gas industry and, and, and without causing hardship in the short term, I think this can be done with, without people can still have a stake and they can still drive gasoline cars. Sure. It's okay. It's, it's not, I don't think we should vilify people for it, but I think we should just, just generally lean in the direction of sustainability. And I, I actually think solar is, is going to be a majority of us energy generation in the future. And it's certainly trending that mm-hmm. way. And so you get the solar power, mind that with batteries because obviously the sun doesn't shine at night. And, and they use that to charge the electric cars and you have a long-term sustainable solution. And that's what Tesla is trying to move things towards. And I think we've made a lot of progress and progress in that regard. But when you look at our cars, we, we don't believe that environmentalism, that caring about the environment should mean that you have to suffer. So we make sure that our cars are beautiful, that they drive well, that they're fast, they're sexy, that they're cool. In fact, literally <laughs> the sexy joke, Model S, Model 3, Model X and Y spells out sexy. It's probably the most expensive joke out there. <laughs> but I, I just, I don't know, I like cheesy humor. And, but, but I'm a big fan of let's have an inspiring future and let's, yes. let's work towards a better future and we do so without demonizing. I'm um, okay. It's very interesting. Uh, you use the word global warming and Today, they use the word climate change because you have some places that go up. and stuff. So they were getting themselves a little with the, the word global warming because not every place is warming. Some places are going the opposite direction. But I'm waiting for you to come up with solar panels on the roofs of your cars and on the trunks of the cars. And it just seems like something that at some point you will come up with. I'm sure you'll be the first. But it would seem that a solar panel on the roofs, on flat surfaces, on certain surfaces might be good, yeah. at least in certain areas of the country where you have the, or the world, sure. where you have the sun. But I would think, and I have no idea because that's not my world, but I would think that this would be uh, something that would be interesting. Uh, the one thing that I don't understand is that people talk about global warming or they talk about climate change, but they never talk about nuclear warming. And to me, sure. that's an immediate problem. Because you have, as I said, five countries where you have major nuclear and probably some others are getting there. And that's very dangerous. That's where you need a strong American president because you just you don't want to have this proliferation. But you have five countries and China is much less than us right now, but they're going to catch us sooner than people think. They're way lower. Russia and us are number one and we're tied. And China is far behind, but they're developing at a level that you're not surprised to hear very fast. It's going to, they'll end up catching up, maybe even surpassing. Yeah. But to me, the biggest problem yeah. is not climate change. It's not, and, and everything's, you know, a problem, but it's the greatest. To me, the big problem is the uh, nuclear power. The power of nuclear is so great. And when I talk yeah, about yeah, I'll, prevent world, yeah, I'll awesome. prevent World War III, yeah. I will. But the truth yeah. is that you have to, because this is no longer army tanks going back and forth and shooting at each other. This is yeah. a level of destruction and power that nobody's ever seen before. Yeah, and actually, there's the, there's the bad side of the nuclear war, very bad side. But there's also, I think, nuclear le- electricity Absolutely. generation is underrated. You're right. And it's actually, people have this fear of, of nuclear nuclear electricity generation, but it's actually one of the safest forms of electricity generation. It's, it's just a huge misunderstanding. And if you look at the injuries and deaths caused by, say, I'm not going to pick on coal mining, but just any, just any kind of mining operation. Right. And there's a certain number of, of, of injuries and deaths per year. And you compare that to nuclear, is actually uh, way better. So it's underrated as, a, as an electricity source. And I think 
think it's something that's worth reconsidering. But there's so much regulation that people can't get it done. So that maybe they'll have to change it. It's just it's a rough name. There are some areas like yeah, like name. when you see what happened, in, we'll have to rebrand it. We'll have to give it a good name. We'll name it after you or something. No, it has, <laughs> a, hey, it has a branding problem. When you see what happened, yeah, it does have a branding problem. When you, when you see what happened in Japan, where they say you won't be able to go on the land for about three thousand years. Did you ever see that? And in Russia, where they had the problem, where they the, there's a lot of bad things happened, and they have a problem. And they say that in 2,000 years, people will start to occupy the land again. You realize it's pretty bad. No, but, that's not true. But there's, you're well, right no, no, about It's actually not that bad. So, like, after Fukushima happened in Japan, like, I, pe- people were asking California, are we worried about the nuclear cloud coming from Japan? I'm like, no, that's crazy. It's actually, it's not even dangerous in Fukushima. I actually flew there and ate locally grown vegetables on TV to prove it. And I donated a solar water treatment, a solar power a system for a water treatment plant. And yeah, but you haven't been feeling so well lately, and I'm worried about it. No, but it's <laughs> I'm fine. It's Hiroshima and Nagasaki were, were bombed, but now they're they're like full cities again. So right. it's, it's well, really great. not that's something great. that you know. Yeah. So it's, it's not it's not as scary as people think, basically. Yeah. But let's see. Are there some other topics we should touch on? L- lawfare. I think we, we need to be it's concerned about what they've done um, to this country. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, oh, we just won the big case in Florida. This was a, a Biden administration did something that's never been done in this uh, country, and that's go after their political opponent, me, with this nonsense and just nonsense. And the big case in Florida, we won, but they've always they always pick a uh, judge and a jury, and they use the local DAs, they use the local attorney generals, like Fani, Fani, spelled F A N I, Fani, and it's yeah. it's all a big hoax, and it's all run from there, like in Manhattan, the. One of the top people from the Justice Department went in, ran Manhattan, ran the state. The Letitia James deal was run by a person from the Department of Justice, Biden. They've never done this before. And they set up a very bad precedent. It's called lawfare. It's a terrible thing and never happened in our country. It does happen in banana republics and third world countries, but it's never happened. And the incredible thing is it actually drove my numbers up because people see, fortunately, I have a platform like you or in all fairness, like a conversation like this where I can talk about it and people understand that you fight for election integrity and you end up getting indicted because you're fighting for election integrity. And when the day comes that you can't fight for election integrity, you don't have a country anymore. So what yeah. happens is they went after their political opponent, me. Now, Biden's a close to vegetable stage, in my opinion. OK, I, I looked at him today on the beach and I said, why would anybody allow him the guy could barely walk. Why would anybody allow him? Do you have a political advisor that thinks this looks good? He thinks this looks good because it looks so bad and it's ridiculous. And he's been doing right, that right. for a long time. He can't lift the chair. The chair weighs about three ounces. It's for children and old people to lift. And uh, he can't yeah. lift it. The whole thing is great. Well, he's, he's, he's clearly, he's clearly, we just don't have a president. Right you don't now. have this a president. And she's going to be worse than um, him because she is a San Francisco liberal who destroyed San Francisco. And then as attorney general, she destroyed California. You talk about location and we're talking about the sun and the water and all. There's nothing better than California. She has destroyed that. She was the original DA. She was the original in San Francisco. She was the original general in California. What she has done to California is, you know better than I do. You just left California for a lot of those reasons. And what she's done with crime, with cashless bail, where you kill somebody. We have states there, you kill somebody and they let you out right away. You don't have to even put up and then they never find the people unless they kill again and then they let them out again. Our our country is becoming a very dangerous place. And she is a radical left San Francisco liberal. And now she's trying to protect. Now she's looking like she's she wants to be more Trump than Trump, if that's possible. I don't think it's possible, but she wants to be more Trump than Trump. I want a wall. I I think that's she wants to release all the prisoners that are in detention. And some of these guys are really bad. Right. That just came out today. She wants she doesn't want to build the wall, even though the walls work. Walls and wheels on your business. Everything you do is obsolete. Almost well, not the tunnels, but everything is obsolete. Even your rocket ships they are like a month later. They're obsolete. You find a better way to the only thing that's not obsolete is a wall and a wheel. And the wall I built hundreds of miles of wall. And that's why we had such good numbers. I was going to add 200 miles. We bought it. We could have flipped it up in three weeks and they sold it for five cents on the dollar. That meant, I said, wow, that means that they actually do want to have open borders. She wants to have open borders, and now she's going like she's tough on the border. It's such a lie. Yeah, this is simply not yeah. true. This is simply no, not true. No, and everybody knows yeah, it's, a, it's a disgrace that she yeah. can say it. No, obviously what's happening overnight is they're – 
rewriting history and and making Kamala sound like a moderate when in fact she is far left, like far left. Worse than Bernie um, Sanders. She is considered yeah. more liberal by far than Bernie Sanders. She's a radical left lunatic. And if she's going to be our president very quickly, you're not going to have a country anymore. And she'll go back to all yeah. of the things that she believes in. She believes in defunding the police. She believes in no fracking, zero. Now all of yeah, a sudden yeah, she's yeah. saying, no, I, I will. I really want to see fracking. The day, the, if they got in, the day she got in, she'll end fracking. And by the way, if people didn't think that, the lunatics that, what, that really believe in that, they won't vote for her. The Palestinians yeah. and Israel. She is so anti-Israel and she's bad. She actually did something that was impossible. Both sides hate him. Both sides. That was a hard yeah. thing to do. Unification. Yeah, no, Netanyahu came to give a, a talk to a joint uh, Senate and House sitting and I was there and Kamala stood him up. What does that say? I think it's highly um, disrespectful to uh, say if you're a Jewish person or if you believe in Israel, if you're a person that was a very pro-Israel, if you vote for her, it's worse than Biden and Biden was bad. But if you vote for her, you ought to have your head examined. And tonight, as we're doing this, I'm seeing reports coming that they expect an attack tonight or tomorrow from hundreds and maybe thousands of rockets. Their Iron Dome, as they call it, as we all call it, but their shield that they build, that can be swamped. We'll use the term that's yeah. appropriate, swamp. But they yeah. swamp it by shooting enough missiles. You know this better than anybody. By shooting enough missiles, sure. they can't defend themselves. They just obliterate the whole yeah. place. And that's what some people think they're looking to do. And we have no leadership. There's no respect for the United States of America with these people. And I'm telling you, yeah. you'll be worse than him because she's a believer yeah, no, in I, being I radical right. left I, and he I, wasn't. I, I think you're right. It, you really, it's, it's important for the public that may be listening to this to say, to look at uh, Kamala's track record before the last like month and say, is that a track record you agree with? And I think if you're an independent moderate, you definitely would not agree with it because it is a, her behavior has been far left. And we're seeing just an overnight propaganda attempt to rewrite history and make it sound like Kamala's moderate when she in, in fact is not moderate. Her, so her running that, mate approved, signed into legislation, tampons in boys' bathrooms, okay? Now, yeah, that's all yeah, that's I weird. have to hear. Tampons in boys' <laughs> bathrooms. And that means she believes yeah. in that, too. Yeah, he, this case. guy, because he was the closest to her. A lot of people thought she'd pick sort of the opposite, but she picked an anti-Israel, radical left person. But she is far worse, they say, than Bernie Sanders. If we have her as a president, if we have a Democrat at this moment as a president, I don't think our country can survive. I, th I think it's I think it's a, a massive I think we're in massive trouble, frankly, with the Kamala administration, and that's my honest opinion. And and I, I think I think really it's essential that you win for the good of the country for this election, and that's understating my opinion. Now you know <laughs> you, 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 may, you may have seen this, but I, I got a letter from the EU Commission like saying to not have disinformation on the like during this discussion that we're having, and there's there's a lot of attempts to do censorship and to force censorship even on Americans from other countries. And what do you think about that? I know the European Union very well. They take great advantage of the United States in trade. We, through a different form, NATO, we protect them. And yet, if you build a car in the United States, you can't sell it in Europe. You just can't sell it. It's impossible. The same thing with our farmers find it very difficult to do business. We have a deficit with them of $250 billion, which people don't know. It sounds so nice, the European Union, but let me tell you, they're not as tough as China, but they're bad. And I let them know it. And that's probably why they notified you. No, they don't treat uh, our country. We defend them with Ukraine. So we're in for $250 billion and they're in for about $71 billion and they have the same size. It's If you add up the European nations at, in terms of an economy, it's about the same size when you say as us. and. They're yeah. in, and, and they're in much greater risk. They, they're right there. We have an ocean separating us from, in this case, the enemy would be Russia. It used to be for the Soviet yeah. Union, but let's assume they're close enough. And what happens is they're in for 70 something million, I think even less than that billion. And we're in for about 250 billion. And it could be a lot higher than that. And I say, why aren't you going to equalize? Why aren't they paying? what we're paying and they're in much more there. It's much more important for them because of the fact that they're right near there. They're all in that location. We're not, but they should. And I did it with NATO. We were, there were only seven countries that were paid up in NATO out of 28 at the time. And yeah. was the United States subsidizing NATO, tremendously subsidizing NATO. And I said, I yeah. went in and I said, yeah. you got to pay up. If you don't pay up, I'm going to defend you any longer. I took a lot of heat. What happened? Billions and billions of dollars came flowing in. And yeah, you know. I think a lot of the public isn't aware of the fact that the United States 
pays a disproportionate share of the NATO expenses. And then we can take an advantage of on trade. So think of that. The point of NATO is defending Europe. And it's, it's okay. why is the United States paying disproportionately more to defend Europe than Europe? That doesn't make sense. That's unfair. And that that is an appropriate thing to address. When you talk about cost cutting and savings and everything else, honestly, look, there's nobody that feels worse about the Ukraine situation than I do, because I know it would have never happened. I know Zelensky. He was very honorable to me because when they went with the Russia hoax and they said I had a phone call with him, he said it was a perfect phone call. It was a great phone call. He could have grandstanded and said, oh, he was very threatening. He said, no, it was a very nice phone call. I called him up to congratulate him on his win. And you end up uh, getting impeached because these people are lunatics. I was talking about the difference from the people within and the enemies on the outside. In many cases, the people from within are more dangerous for our country than the Russians and the Chinas. If you have a smart president, you're not going to have a problem with them. You're going to make you're going to do things. Yeah. Now, they've taken advantage of us incredibly, but you're going to do things with the right person. Yeah, I, I think it's obvious that you're a believer and an advocate of, of free speech because during your first time as president, you were attacked relentlessly every day, often very unfairly with false, with false attacks. And you didn't try to shut down the media. You didn't try to inhibit their freedom of speech. And I think that says a lot. The good thing is that you and I have, and some people, very few, we can get the word out. Although sometimes it's hard because they don't want to print it. Like we're having a great conversation right now. Kamala wouldn't have this conversation. She can't because she's not smart. (laughs) She's not a smart person, by the way. She can't have this conversation. Biden, we don't even have to talk about it. He couldn't have this conversation. He would have given up in the first half of a question. He would have walked out. He would have said, where am I? Where am I going? So anyway, but uh, no, he wouldn't have this. That's true. Not a lot of people would have this conversation. We cover a lot of territory, but the beauty is that we can have a conversation and I'm able to get it out without, because I get treated (laughs) unfairly by Biden. This is a really big point. You can have a conversation with you (laughs) and you can't have a conversation with Biden or Kamala. It's like not, it's not possible. (laughs) So it's it's like talking to an NPC. So it's just impossible. But think Um, of it. We need a man or a person who's unbelievably sharp in order to stop all the nuclear danger and all the dangers that I'm talking about. And I got along with all these. I got along with Kim Jong-un. We had dinner. We had everything. And he, he really liked me. And I got along with him. By the way, he's the absolute boss over there. A lot of people said, oh, do you think he really? Uh, let that's let sure. me tell you, I <laughs> saw things that you don't want to know about. He is the boss. But you know, we had a good relationship. And and he doesn't like, uh, he considers him a, a stupid man, he said. He's a stupid man. At least he speaks his mind. In this country, you're not allowed to say it, but I guess you are. You should be allowed to say yeah. that it's true. But we need really, we need smart people. And we need people that have an ability to lead. And she doesn't have that ability. Can you imagine the chairman? Yeah. She, very well. Can you imagine her and him negotiating or standing together? Um, it, it is, the whole concept yeah. is ridiculous. She is terrible. She's terrible. But she's getting a free ride. I saw a picture of her yeah, yeah. on Time Magazine today. She looks like the most beautiful actress ever to live. I, it was a drawing. And actually, yeah, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. She looked, she looked, <laughs> didn't look, yeah. she didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's part of what people in America wanted, people in America want to feel ignorant and inspired about the future. They want to feel like the future is going to be better than the past and that this, that America is going to do things that are greater than we've done in the past. Reach right. nights that make you proud to be an American and, and, and excited about the future. They want and, the American uh, you know, dream just, back. They want the American dream back more important than anything else. It's like, you don't have that today because the people, they've been just sucked. They see incompetent people running our, the Biden thing is very interesting. People just found him to be incompetent. And when I debated him, I was like, is this for real? It was. Yeah, it's just absurd. It was just absurd. But I think that there are like some grand projects that, that we, we could do. I think we could build a base on the moon. We could send American astronauts to Mars. We, we could build high speed connections yep. that are more advanced than anything else in the world between our cities. So people have fast transport, which is possible to solve traffic with tunnels. Um, right. We've already made prog- great progress in Vegas doing that. And and just do things that are exciting and inspiring to make the future feel like it's better than the past. Well, I saw and what I'd you like, did in I, Vegas. I, and I'll tell you, it was amazing. I got to see. I took a big glimpse at it, and it's incredible. It's incredible. And you could do that all over. You could do that all over. It's it's deep. Yeah, you don't even need much structure, assuming you're in the right area. No, it's, it's, it's straightforward. It's amazing. Um, and I think we could do some things that, like, like China's got incredible uh, high-speed rail between its cities, but I think it's actually possible with tunnels, if, if with the regulation, with an ability to actually, where it's like legal to actually 
do the tunnels. Then you can have high speed tunnels that are actually better than, than anything else in the world for high speed transport between cities. And that would be something that Americans can say, wow, okay, we've got something that's cooler than anyone else in yeah. the world. That's the thing that makes you proud to be an American. And much safer than surface trains where there is a danger there with people, with crazy people. Yeah. It's much safer, much better. And it's sad because I've seen some of the greatest trains. I find it fascinating. And I've seen the systems and how they work and the bullet trains, they call them. And they, yeah. they go unbelievably fast, unbelievably comfortable with no problems. And we don't have anything like that in this country, not even close. And it yeah. doesn't make sense that we... Does it make sense? Yeah, I, I think also there's hopping on the excess regulation, but I think something that like I think people can generally understand is that what happens with laws and regulations is that they just there's more and more of them every year, and the less process to clean them up, eventually everything becomes right. illegal, and and that actually sl- sl- it slows down the development of new technologies. If you take the sort of I think we, there's room for some reform at the FDA yeah. for yeah. improving the speed with which we uh, you know, approve drugs that that could help uh, save lives and improve people's yeah. lives. And I worked uh, very and, hard on that. But we got that down yeah. to to the lowest number ever. And we got therapeutics approved in the FDA that people can't even believe the speed. But I took them on. I, I don't think they like me too much, but I got things approved in the FDA at numbers that they wouldn't believe. And it's a very bureaucratic group. Actually, it's a fine group of people in many cases. I got to know a lot of them, but I was pushing them really hard for Regeneron for so many different things that were really pretty amazing. But the FDA takes too long. They would, it's 12 years to get a product approved. I got it down to four and I yeah. got some things done very quickly, but it's, it's really something that is going to have to be worked on because it takes too long. It just takes too long. Yeah. It, it just takes too long and, and it's, you, you end up in the same with, with the approval, but it just, it just, it takes years instead of something that, that I think could potentially take months yeah. that improves people's lives. Yeah. I think, but it, I, just, I just want to sort of hop on this point that there has to be an active process for re- reducing rules and regulations because otherwise they just keep building up every year yep. and you get like hardening of the arteries and eventually everything's illegal uh, or takes forever. And then we just, we, we just ossify as a society. We just, we, we can't make any progress. Yeah. And that's, it's a really big well, deal. Well, you know, Elon, so, just getting back to the FDA for one second, I got something done called right to try. This is where you can go in and if you're terminally ill, you can use a space age medicine or whatever it may be. We have the best doctors, the best labs in the world. We really do. And but people would go to other countries because you couldn't use this the product, even if they thought it worked because it's going through the FDA. I got it approved yeah. where you can yeah. you, you basically you look, nobody went. The doctors didn't want it because of the liability. The country didn't want it. Our country because they didn't want to get to it. These are people terminally ill. The insurance companies didn't want it and the pharmaceutical companies. Nobody wanted it. I got everybody into a room. And we came up with an agreement that you won't get sued. And also, they didn't want it on their record. If somebody's terminally ill and they die after taking a drug, they didn't want that on their record. So we set a second, a, a separate list if somebody was, so it wouldn't count as a negative. Yeah. Okay. And as we got yeah. it done, we have saved, we could try, they've been trying to get this done for 58 yeah. years. And it sounds simple, but it wasn't because of the insurance companies, nobody wanted it. But we got it done. Sure. Somebody signs, you sign a document that you're not going to sue the insurance companies, the country, you're not going to sue anybody. And we got it done. And we're saving tens of thousands of lives right to try. Hopefully you never need it. But if you, you don't have to travel to Asia, people, right. if they had money, they go to Asia, yeah, they sure. go to Europe. If they don't have money, they go home and die. That's what happened. They'd go home and die. Yeah, and actually, to, to, to give Europe some, it's like if a drug is approved approved in the, in Europe, which has a crazy amount of regulations, it should obviously be in the U.S. Yeah. They got more regulations than we do. So what? why would a drug be approved in Europe and not in the U.S.? That's crazy. We did it. We um, did something that really, they've been trying to do it for 50 years, and they just couldn't get it done, and I got it done. And it's, it's really something. But you're right. Some people go to Europe. It's a drug isn't approved here, but it's approved in Europe. And it's a drug that, generally speaking, would yeah. work. It's a pretty crazy. Absolutely. And I, th- I think so, as long as people are properly informed of, of the pros and cons and like the, these are the risks, these are the, these are the risks. And like you make your own decision. Yeah. That, that makes sense. I think just in closing up, I, and by the way, I'm looking at the numbers. You get a lot of people listening. I hope you don't get yeah. nervous because you get a lot of people listening to you right now, like 60 million or something. What is that number? It's crazy. It's amazing how you can see that right away. How many? What is the number? Wow. What is it? I, I think in well, terms that's of people. A, that's, that's, a big, that's bigger than you said. You, you said 25 and you're more than much more than double that number. 25 million. I think you're going to be 60 or 70. And I guess over a period of time. Hey, that's I congratulate you. Do I get paid for this or not? I think actually in terms of the number of people that will, will hear this conversation over the next a few days, two right. weeks, it, it's going to be a hundred. That's what they say. Yeah, that's good. Look, it's an yeah. honor. I, but I just ask this, are you better off now or 
well, you're better off when I was president. Nobody's better off now. We put out polls on that and nobody's better off now. Inflation has killed it. And they also feel very unsafe. You look at what's going on with a lot of different things. You look at the riots we had at yeah. the colleges over, it's ridiculous, but right. all of the riots, they just feel unsafe. And now they really feel unsafe because you have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. I call it Biden well, migrant yeah. crime. Maybe I'll call well, it Kamala uh, migrant crime. But with all these things, I always try to like, try to get to the ground truth by just asking people. And my, my mom lives in New York. And I, I was like, do you know, have you, any of your friends been attacked or assaulted? And she said, yeah, three of her friends in, in three separate Crazy. incidents were assaulted just in recent months, just walking around the streets in New York. And, and I said, did, what happened to the people that assaulted them? Oh, nothing. They, they, they got away. And they, they just know. They always that, get away. Not, and they don't ever, and they don't even bother reporting it because there's not, they know that there's not, they're not going to, people aren't going to get prosecuted. They just let violent criminals out in New York. The only one that gets prosecuted bail. is Donald Trump. They don't get, they prosecute Trump. Yeah, it's just obviously messed up. That's no, terrible. If, if violent criminals are being getting off scot-free. Yeah. And, and meanwhile, the New York spending massive resources prosecuting you. And so what this, and I think the sensible public said, looks at this and says, well, what the heck's going on here? This is obviously abuse of the legal system. The, the legal system is supposed to be protecting the public right. from violent criminals. And it, it should be obviously allowing the public to make their own decision about who should be president as opposed to some legal case. Once they start this precedent, because this can go on with the next one. This is a very bad precedent, what they're doing in terms of going after their political opponent. And that's all it is. It's going after their political opponent. And then you get a judge who's a strong Democrat. And I'm being nice when I say that in many cases, crooked as hell. But you get a judge and you go into an area where a Republican gets three or four percent of the vote. And you have a jury pool yeah. with people that hate Republicans or hate sure. also be the other way, though, because it could start the other way in areas where they hate Democrats. Exactly. And you get into yep. a Pandora's box is a very dangerous thing for uh, this country and a very dangerous thing even for the state. New York City is yep, losing absolutely. New York City and state lose a lot of business over what they did to me because these people say we don't want that to happen to us. That's no justice system. You have an unfair system yes. of justice and it's costing New York State a tremendous amount of money. People are leaving and companies are leaving and they won't come back. All of that stuff is important. But the economy now is the big thing and we can turn that economy up so fast and people are going to be back again. We're going to get rid of inflation. Yeah, I, think I think there's a lot of opportunity. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just want I, I I want to congratulate uh, you. You've done an amazing job. You are you have definitely got a fertile mind. We can talk. You and I can talk about rockets, we'll tunnels. We can talk about <laughs> tunnels and rockets and electric cars. So many things. And now you're into the AI, and that's going to be another beauty. I'll say. So it's it's an amazing it's an amazing thing you've done, Elon. It's an amazing thing, and I well, congratulate well, you. Thank you. And I just uh, say here's to an exciting, inspiring future that people can look forward to and be optimistic and excited about what happens next. And that's uh, the kind of future that I think uh, you'll bring as president, and that's why I endorse you. I appreciate that. That endorsement meant a lot to me. Not all endorsements mean that much, to be honest. Your endorsement meant a lot. And we have a, a phrase, make America great again. It's pretty simple, but it really says that we want to make America great again, and we can do it. We can do it now. But if we were going to suffer another four years like we've suffered for the last four years, I'm not sure the country can ever come back. That's how it is. It's so bad. We have to do I think, a lot I of think things. that's a very real risk. Yeah, it's a big risk. It's a very real risk. Yep. And, and I'd just like to, to note to people listening, like, I've not been very political before. And, and if, just, if you look at my, track, my record, it's, I've actually been, I'm not like, some sort of try to paint me as a far right guy, which is absurd because I'm like making electric vehicles and solar and, and batteries helping them with the environment. And, and I actually, I, I supported Obama. I stood in line for six hours to shake Obama's hand when he was running for president. And so it's not like I'm like some sort of died in the wool long term Republican. I'm actually, I, call myself historically a moderate Democrat, and, and, but now I feel like we're really at, at a critical juncture for the country. And I think a lot of people thought the Biden administration would be a moderate administration, but it's not. And obviously, we were just going to send an, an even further left administration with Kamala, that's my opinion. Her dad is literally, she was brought up as a, as a natural, her dad is a Marxist economist. That's, you can Google it. It's not a, we're not making this up. That's how she was brought up. And we, we just, we, we want to have a future that is prosperous. And I think we're just at this critical juncture. And, and it, I think this is a case of the, 
America is going to add a fork in the road. And it's true. And I think it will take if the path to like you are the path to prosperity. And I think Kamala is the opposite. Then that's my, that's my opinion. I'm going to, I'm going to get attacked like crazy. And I've also experienced quite a bit of lawfare myself. And, but I'm just trying to tell people my honest opinion. And I've been active and really active in politics before. And I'm just trying to point out that my track record historically has been moderate, if not slightly left. And so this is to people out there who are in the moderate camp to say, I think you should support Donald Trump for president. And, and I think it's actually a very important junction in the road. And we're in deep trouble if it goes the other way. I want to thank you. And I actually always did think of you as somewhat left. I must say that. So yeah. even more of an well, honor to yeah. have your endorsement. I know how strong you feel about it. But when you think of her, San Francisco, 15 years ago, I had a great friend, Bob Tish. He said it's the greatest city in America. And now it's not, it's almost not livable there. And California, likewise. And she was involved in the destruction of San Francisco and the destruction of California. And she will be involved in the destruction of our country if people are so unwise as to elect her. And I hope that doesn't happen. And I hope the elections are going to be run honestly. We're going to turn this country around. We're going to we're going to do things that and we can do it fairly quickly. And we have to get rid of the criminals that have been, you know, given to us by other countries as they laugh yeah. at us. They think we're stupid to accept these people. These are radical, stone cold killers in many cases and terrorists. And they're in our country by the hundreds of thousands. Yeah. And we have to take yeah. them out. Yeah. I mean, if, if I could summarize it, perhaps I think these are issues that I think most people in America would, would agree with, which is that we want safe and clean cities. We want secure borders. We want sensible government spending. We want to res, uh, restore res, both the perception and reality of respect in the, in the judicial system to stop the lawfare. And, and, and I think that's like, how are, the, how are those even right wing positions? I think those are just, that's just common sense. And that's, would you agree with 100%. that? A hundred percent. I don't understand the whole, they call it progressive. They don't like the word liberal anymore, but call it liberal or progressive. I don't understand how somebody could say that it's okay for them to empty prisons into our country. And again, I told you their crime rates all over the world are going way down, which makes sense. In fact, the next time what we'll do is if something happens with this election, which would be a horror show, we'll meet the next time in Venezuela because it'll be a far safer place to meet than our country. Okay. So we'll go, you and I will go and we'll have a meeting and dinner in Venezuela because that's what's happening. Their crime rates coming down and our crime rates going through the roof. And it's so simple. And it's, you haven't seen anything yet because these people have come into our country and they're just getting acclimated. And they don't know about being politically correct law enforcement or lack of law enforcement. And our police, I, I have to just end with this. We have great police. We have great law enforcement, but they're not allowed to do their job. They have to be able to do their job yeah. without being destroyed. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's obviously demoralizing if you're a police officer risking your life to, to, to arrest criminals who could kill you and do kill you sometimes. And then you arrest the violent criminal and, and then the DA doesn't prosecute and, and that's let the guy out. Yep. And like, why should a police officer risk their life to arrest a violent felon if there's Elon, like, nothing's going to happen? Even worse, they prosecute the police officer. They, they go after it and they prosecute the police officer and they take away his pension. They take away his yeah. job. He loses his family. He loses his house. I, I, th I thought it was very telling, like incredibly telling that when that there was a case where a gang of thugs beat up police officers, I think it was in Times yep. Square in New York. And and then nothing happened to those guys. They were let out zero bail. And uh, I think a bunch of them were given free tickets to California. Why does that, that, that is a gross indignity against the United States. And that's how this is insane. Have we lost all pride? What that? How can such a thing be allowed to occur? I've never seen anything we see where they get shot. It's a very dangerous profession, but it's something they're very proud of and they want to be able to do their job. But I've seen them get shot. I've seen a lot of things. But I've never seen these guys are standing in the middle of a big street Everybody watching them, and they're literally boxing, like punching, stand up fighting. A police officer, there were two of them, and yeah. yet about six yeah, of yeah. these guys, and they're punching the hell out of them. And in their own country, they would be, if they did that, they'd be shot. <laughs> they would be shot instantly. And they come to countries, and it's taking them a while to realize that we don't do that in the country. But in their own country, yeah. if they stood on a street and had a fight with a police officer, they would be shot. There's no political correctness. And it's such a sad, yeah, it's, just, it's such a sad thing to see. And that's the reason you have yeah, crime, we, by the way, yeah. because we don't do anything about yeah. it. Yeah, we, we just cannot have a situation where our police officers are beat, beaten up on camera by a, a, a gang of illegal immigrants and then nothing happens to, to the, the guys that beat, beat up the cops and they're let out. This is unacceptable. Well, we're going to change it um, and we're going to get them out of the country. When I first uh, got involved, they said you couldn't get them back to these countries. You couldn't take them back. In the case of uh, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, some others, 
you couldn't get it back. And I said, really? Oh, you can't get it back. Because under, uh, oh, he couldn't get him back. They'd put up, they'd fly him in and they'd put planes on the runways in these countries. So you couldn't land a plane. They'd bring him back. And the general told me, the generals told me, sir, we can't bring him back. The countries won't accept MS-13 gang members. They won't accept him. And I said, really, how much do we pay these various countries in terms of economic aid, which is also somewhat ridiculous. And the answer was $750 million. I said, good, tell them they're in default. They're delinquent. We're not going to do, we're not paying them anymore because they won't accept yeah, it. And you know what happened? They all called me, yeah, every yeah. one of them. They said, we would be honored to take them back, sir. We would be honored. It was so easy, but it's one of those things. And we got them back. We took in so many, MS-13 is probably yeah. the worst gangs in the world. They're the most vicious, violent. We took them out of here by the thousands and got them out of here and their countries took them back. And because I said, you're not getting any more economic aid. And once I said that, they were nice. They wouldn't take them back for Obama. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't take them back for anybody. And now we have a problem because we have this guy and they, again, they don't take them back anymore with the Biden because they don't respect them. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's got it's to be done. We just can't have, whether they're citizens or not citizens, we can't have, because they won't prosecute citizens either. It's not just illegals. If it's, you can't have violent, repeat violent offenders that are not, that don't get incarcerated That's right. because they will obviously, by definition, continue to to people. And 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 I, I think where part of this comes from is that there's and I do, you know I do consider myself liberal in some ways. It's just that you want to have empathy for right. people. Obviously, you want to have empathy for people. I totally agree with that. You want to have empathy, but you also have to have empathy for the victims of the criminals. And if you just have empathy for the criminals, it's actually shallow empathy. It's not real. You're not thinking. You're not. You're, you're one layer deep it's empathy. You got to say if, if you don't incarcerate this. Person, person going to hurt, whether they might kill someone, they might rape, rape someone. If, if you don't incarcerate them, you have to have empathy for the victims. And there's a lack of empathy for the victims of the criminals and, and too much empathy for the criminals. It doesn't make sense. I, uh, that's why you want to have deep empathy for society as a whole, not shallow empathy for, for criminals. Right. And we have to give our police officers the dignity and the respect that they deserve. And we have to let them do their job. They're, they can do a great job. But we have to let them do their job. And if we don't do that, we're, it's going to all it's going to all disappear. There's never been a society like this where you're allowed to do anything you want and nothing happens. And I'm talking about violent crime and it's going to get violent because these are really violent people. And we're going to get them out of our country and we're going to get them back to where because they were sent here by the presidents and by the various people that run those countries. And I know every one of those guys and they're smart people and they're streetwise people. And they really think that. The USA is stupid. They think we're run by stupid people, and they happen to be right. But when I was there, we had no problem. We got them out. We took out thousands of MS-13 gang members. We brought them back. And uh, now, again, they, it's the same old story. We don't do it. And they actually gave them a big increase. They raised it up to billions of dollars and nothing for it. It's, I hope everybody's going to vote for Trump, and we're going to get this country Straight. Yeah. And I didn't need this. I, I'm like, I didn't need this. I had a very nice <laughs> yeah. life. I didn't need to, to go yeah, through yeah. court systems and go through all the other stuff and run at the sure. same time. I have to run. I have to go through fake trials with, in some cases, corrupt judges, totally corrupt judges. I didn't need it. I had a nice life. I have great locations. I have beautiful oceans that I have places. And this was, but I felt it was important. And if I had to, do, if I had to do it over again, you probably think I'm crazy for doing it, actually. But if I had to do it over again, I would have done it over again because this is so much more important than me or my life. This is we're going to save this country. This country is going down, and these people are bad people that we're running against, and they're liars. They make statements. They. They do things that are so bad. They say they're going to make a strong border. They say they've been great on the border and they've been the worst in history. They say they're yes, going to stop it's crime. It's, for, for and, for it's, it's, it's so fact, incredible. For, it's, it's got to the point where, where people just don't even bother reporting crime in a lot of that's cities right. because they know nothing is going to happen. And that's what I hear anecdotally from people all the time. It's just my values. I'm just saying to, to, to people out there, like my, the things I, I think are important for the future is that we've got to have safe cities. We've got to have secure borders. We've got to have sensible spending. And, and we have, and, and we're going to have, you know, and right. so we can have a prosperous future. And then we, we want to have some exciting sort of moonshot project that people can get, get fired up about. But that's the future I'm looking for. And I'm pro environment, uh, but, but I'm, I'm not against, I'm not like, if, I don't think we should vilify the oil and gas industry because they're keeping civilization going uh, right now. And, but I do think we want to move at a reasonable speed towards a sustainable energy economy. Those are my values. And I think, and, and that's, why I'm supporting you for president. I appreciate it. We're going to make, we're going to give incentive to companies to come into our country, not to leave our country. We're going to be, be giving tremendous incentives. We want companies to build here, not to build in other locations. And we want to create jobs. 
And again, it's about the American dream. You don't hear about the American dream anymore, Elon. You don't hear, you're the American dream in the truest sense, but you don't hear about the American dream anymore. And you're going to hear about it. People, they need that incentive to go out and, yeah. and do it. They're going to love their lives. They're going to love, they're going to look forward to getting up in the morning and going to, going to a job that they love, not a, that they can't stand or not any job at all where they have no money, yeah. where they yeah. literally have no money. And then they end up with violence and lots of other problems. No, we're going to do, yeah. we're going to do some great things. And I learned a lot in the first, we had a great economy and all of that. We rebuilt the military, we did so much, but I also learned, and I also learned the best people. I learned the good people, the, the smart people, the dumb people, the people that can do things that people you learn. When I first came in, I, I tell people I was in Washington, DC only 17 times, according to the fake news media. I was in 17 times. I never stayed over. And you don't know people. You rely on other people to give you names. And then you realize the people you relied on weren't so good. Now, we had great people, but we also had some where I wouldn't have you know, used them had I known. Now I yeah. know everybody. And I think we're going to we're going to really turn things around fast. We have no choice. Otherwise, we're not going to have a country. And I really appreciate this has been to me. It's been a lot of fun being with you. You're an amazing guy. You've done an incredible job and a great inspiration to people, a great inspiration. And I hope you keep going and just continue to do well. And we're going to have a big election coming up. And I think November 5th will be the most important day in the history of our country. I think that election will be the most important election. And I think it'll end up being maybe the most important day in the history of our country, because if yeah. we don't win, I just feel so sorry for everybody. No, we're, I think we're at a fork in the road of destiny, of civilization. And and I think we need to take the right path. And I think you're the right path. So I yeah. think that's what it comes down to. Thank you very much, Elon. It's a great honor. And we'll do it again sometime. And it's been really fun. And I hope you got a lot of viewers. I hear you got a lot. But I hope <laughs> sure. you got a yeah, lot. I, I know you got a lot of them. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Elon. Thank you very much. Bye.